Welcome to EduTalk. I'm Antoinette Richardson, Chief Education Officer for Mayor Baraka's Office of Comprehensive Community Education. We have a very interesting show for you today. We will highlight the Newark Regional Business Partnership and the work that is being done with young people in our city. Joining me from the partnership are Chip Halleck, President and C CEO and founder of the Newark Young Entrepreneurs Academy. Emily Manns, president of EMI Strategy, co-founder of Have You Met Newark, tours and program manager for the Young Entrepreneurs Academy, and Couture Core Cody. Did I say your name right? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, but if you watch our show, you know that I struggle to get names right the first time, and when I do, I got to give it to myself. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Couture Core is the owner of Couture's Closet, and she is the 2018 Newark Young Entrepreneurs Academy participant. So welcome. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Of Thank course. You. And we do a fun fact. In every EduTalk show, we do a fun fact. And what happens now is that those of you who are viewing, you have a few minutes while the show is going on to try to figure out what the answer is to our fun fact. So here's our fun fact question for today. According to a 2017 Forbes report, what is the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs? Hmm. <laughs> Let's see if you have the answer, and we'll come back to that question with the answer at the end of the program. So, Chip, may I call you Chip? Please do. Okay. Can I call you Tony? You absolutely <laughs> must. <laughs> yes, you may. Please tell us a little bit about the Newark uh, Regional Business Partnership, uh, the work you're doing with the Young Entrepreneurs Academy. Okay. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to do that. Sure. So, the Newark Regional Business Partnership is really the Chamber of Commerce here in Newark, founded nearly 100 years ago. So, that's the heritage that. of the organization. Uh, it's had a lot of names mm -hmm. over that period of time, but our basic intent as an organization remains the same and that's to connect and inform our members and try to help them be more successful uh, while at the same time uh, advocating for them and advocating for policies that make Newark a stronger place and to help to revitalize the city. So that's our intention as an organization. And we have about 400 members, uh, about half of them in the city of Newark and half of them in the surrounding area, but all who have a distinct interest in the city. Um, and the Young Entrepreneurs Academy is, is one of the programs, a way for us to give back. I mean, we do a lot direct service to our members, but mm -hmm. the Young Entrepreneurs Academy is a way for us to, to give back to, to the city's youth. So let me ask you, um, I mean, you could give back a lot of ways. Why is it so important to work with young people in the city? Well, we think certainly entrepreneurship is consistent with our origins as a business mm -hmm. organization, so uh, we think that's important. And we also know that, um, you know, getting rid of or eradicating generational poverty is something at the top of everybody's agenda, certainly at the top of Mayor Baraka's agenda. So something that we can do that uh, can foster students' interests in business as a, mm -hmm. as a career, uh, get them to examine whether or not they've got what it takes to be an entrepreneur in a very serious way, mm -hmm. uh, is, is very important because it gives them something to look forward to, something uh, for their future, and can help the city build as they build their own businesses. And then we move from a generational poverty to generational wealth. And that that's is, what we're hoping to accomplish. That is what we are all hoping to accomplish. That sounds like we are aligned and uh, trying to move in the uh, same direction. We certainly wonderful, are. wonderful. And so um, for the young, uh, for the Newark Young Entrepreneurs Academy, uh, Emily, we have uh, one student here today. I know that there are other uh, young people who are involved in the program. Um, can you just talk about that, about the young people? Uh, how, how does it work? How do they get to do this, and what do they do? Sure. Um, I'd be happy to talk about some of the young people that have been part of the program. Mm -hmm. So the program started four years ago. Um, one individual who uh, competed well at the investors panel, which I'm sure I'll speak about more later, um, that year was a, a a young man named Walter, and he had a neck pillow business. Um, mm -hmm. The next year, uh, one young woman, she had a shea butter business called Fluffy Feelin, uh, Lene. And uh, this past year, we have Couture Core with us today, who has, uh, I will let her tell you more about it, but fashion. And we, we find a lot of the students um, are doing 
fashion businesses, um, food businesses, um, but also service-based businesses like tutoring. Um, so we have a kind of a big mix of students and um, they go through a 25-week program and the first thing we really like to do with them is inspire them um, about business. I think a lot of young New Yorkers, I found, want to really like, serve the community mm -hmm. um, and help the community. And um, we try to show them that they can do that through business. By having their own business, um, they can actually help um, not only their own family, but other people in the city too. And um, just a um, quick fun thing that we did at the beginning of this semester was we took a field trip down Halsey Street. Mm -hmm. We just walked from our, uh, our, our classroom down to Burgerwalla and visited Kai Campbell and he talked a lot about how he started his business um, not just kind of for the interest in, in having a restaurant but because he wanted to build something like that in Newark. Um, and we also visited Ancient African Formula um, and Aminata mm -hmm. um, there spoke about her journey uh, and, and, and what she has accomplished in her years in business. Mm -hmm. So how does the young people apply mm -hmm. or what, what do they have to do if they're interested in getting involved? Great question. So this year we were actually official partners with the Newark Public Schools. Um, so they mm -hmm. helped us get the information out so they had it on their website. We also um, went to a lot of different um, uh, back to school days, so mm -hmm. we, we went to technology high technology. school together <laughs> yep, and sat at the table um, and gave information. We went to um, uh, Shabazz uh, mm -hmm. and their back to school day and backpack giveaway. So we were really out there um, talking to students. Um, the application process begins um, in October and um, that's when we make our selections process as well at the end of the month. Is there a website or an email or a phone number yes. where people can um, get in touch if they don't happen to connect through any of the outreach that you do? Definitely. So um, the email address is newarkea at gmail.com. So newark and then yea at mm -hmm. gmail. Um, I read that email uh, every day. Also, mm -hmm. um, the phone number is 646-856-9076. Um, and I will answer that call or return a voicemail and give people more information. Great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I know <laughs> there's so many young people out there who really probably want to get involved yes and, and I hope this helps you get more young people to choose from we wow. appreciate that yeah. so how many how many students how many young people are able to actually participate we um, we aim for class size of about 25 okay. um, we don't want a class to be too large where um, students can't really get like one-on-one mm -hmm. attention we do have a part of the program that involves mentors where they're sitting um, uh, kind of in small groups with mentors. Mm -hmm. um, we also, you know, don't want it to be too small where we, enough people don't get this opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of our, um, I guess, our ideal class size. Okay, so it's yeah. ideally about 25 students yes. for 25 weeks. Yes. And mm -hmm. what are some of the goals uh, that they should achieve within that 25 week period? Yeah, so we really want them to be able to define their product really well. So um, to speak about their product. Um, and give all the details of what it looks like, how much it costs, how they're gonna make that product. Um, we want them to do some like the hard thinking around pricing, right? How do they price their product? Where are they gonna source their supplies? Um, and then we spend a lot of time actually talking about like customers. So who is your customer? I think a lot of people think, well, I wanna sell to everybody. And we say that's not actually, um, that's not always possible, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to kind of think about who your market is gonna be and focus in on, on those people. Um, and think about where you're going to find find them and how you're going to create a message that resides with them. Last thing I'll mention though is public speaking as well. So that's a, that's important because there is an investors panel. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and that was my next question uh, actually. <laughs> Great. Can who'd like to speak to that to the investors sure, panel? Do well, I, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll explain a little bit the format and then mm -hmm. you can talk to yeah. one of the mm -hmm. participants. So mm -hmm. the investors panel is is kind of like Shark Tank. So anybody who's ever watched <laughs> Shark All right. Tank. With, with much kinder people on the on the much panel, kinder. Uh, <laughs> but but the general idea is after going through uh, approximately you know, 16 weeks of the program and developing their business plan mm -hmm. with the help of mentors and putting a PowerPoint presentation together, they take that presentation and they get in front of our investors, uh, and our investors are there. They are representatives of the business community who are interested in um, in seeing young entrepreneurs flourish. So they're there to ask questions um, mm -hmm. and to, to listen to the students. And then they'll evaluate at the end of the presentations mm -hmm. and decide how much money the students will actually be given to start their businesses. So based on the students' uh, wow. business plan, how much mm -hmm. they need to get their business started, they'll ask for a certain amount. Uh, amounts have ranged from $150 to $1,500. 
uh, and mm -hmm. they'll, based on the strength of their business plan, uh, they'll request that money and the investors okay. will decide after all the presentations are done, uh, we take them to another room and they discuss the strength of the business plans and how much money those, uh, those young entrepreneurs can receive. So this is not a simulation. This is <laughs> a real opportunity to start a business. Uh, and we can talk later about how we actually get them started. Uh, we just don't give them a check uh, mm -hmm. any more than a bank would just give them a check and right. say, you know, go do what you want. So we can talk a little bit more about that. But the, as Emily referred to, and Katorkor can certainly speak to, that experience of getting on their feet and making a, a presentation when some of them didn't know a thing about business four months prior and now their business they're ready to be business owners and are able to make that presentation and in exit interviews and in surveys we've done of the past participants they cite the the investor panel as being the thing that they got the most out of because that experience some of them are very hesitant to get up in front and sure. do presentations something that we we all struggle with especially uh, in, in school so mm -hmm. it's become a very valuable part of the program. So it's a great practical learning experience aside from uh, the entrepreneurship. This is the now. real deal. It yes, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> this is the real deal. The real deal. <laughs> okay. Uh, Emily, is there anything you would want to add? I think Chip really covered it. I think um, one exciting part, though, about the investor panel is it is local business leaders that are mm -hmm. on that investors panel. So um, we have like a networking time built into that. The students get cards mm -hmm. um, and they go and introduce themselves to the people on the panel, which is like networking is mm -hmm. a big part of business. Um, and it, again, it's not really a simulation because it's it's happening. They have the cards, the business leaders are there and everyone is mingling. And uh, I like that part of the uh, of the investors panel uh, particularly. Great. Mm -hmm. Couture uh, yeah. what was your experience like? going uh, uh, before this panel? <laughs> well, it's exactly as Mitch and Emily said, but from a student's point of view, it was really nerve-wracking. And the judges were just looking at us. And one thing I have to say is that you have to have, uh, you have to really enjoy what you do and have confidence on your product or your business because you're trying to sell your product and your business to them. And sometimes they ask questions that I would not be, I never expected, but it was really a fun experience. So did you practice your pitch, or were you just like spontaneous? Oh, like I'll I just practiced go up, you a practiced lot. Your I had pitch. no cards, okay. and, but I tried not to read from them to make it flow smoothly. But I practiced a lot, and it paid off, I guess. <laughs> I guess it did because you were selected to represent the Newark. Is it Yay? Is that my saying? Yes. Right? Yay. The Newark Yay program <laughs> at the 2018. Saunders Scholars Competition in Rochester, New York. Mm -hmm. And you also won second place in Seton Hall University's Pirate Pitch Competition. Yeah. So can you tell us more about those uh, recognitions? Like, and hey, toot your horn. Why do you think <laughs> you won? And then what did you learn? Uh, I'll talk firstly on Seton Hall Pirate Pitch since that have been last week, actually. Okay. So it was a group of st uh, students from all over New Jersey and it took place in South Orange, Senior Hall, the, com the campus. So we had to pitch our idea the same format as the investors panel. So it, was it wasn't as nerve wracking as it was before because I went through this program. So I was mm. prepared, I guess. And um, we had to pitch our, pro our businesses to the, invest to the judges. And they, if you win, they um, pay, they sponsor your business and also give you a scholarship for Senior Hall University mm -hmm. in the future. For the Saunders competition, that was really nerve-wracking because it was not only about New Jersey, it was about the whole country. <laughs> it was the whole country. Represented people um, from different, the APA programs from different states came together. It was really nice to meet other aspiring young entrepreneurs and like their ideas were really inspiring, really amazing to be honest. Um, but it was a really nice experience that I, would never, I wouldn't have ever gotten from school. So this was a new gateway, I guess. Okay, toot your horn. Why do you think you won? What was good about what you did? Why did I win? Hmm. Well. Or what do you think was really great about what you did? I believed in my product, and I believed that my product had like a really had an impact on what um, the people I was speaking to, because my product was to. Um, oh shit! I'm losing my tone of thought. It's okay. My product 
I explained what my product means. The kente, the Ghanaian kente, um, signifies royalty and power. I say that again. Slow down. The Ghanaian kente, mm -hmm. which I made those in Spanish and bow ties mm -hmm. and ties from, signifies royalty and power. So I hope that my mission statement for my business is to help embracing culture with style. So we, I hope, I believe that my business can help others embrace their culture with style as well, which is why I think I, I won. So, Couture Core, what's in Couture's closet? <laughs> so there's suspenders, bow ties and ties, like the suspenders I'm rocking today. All right, all right. <laughs> and I make, I create, I make them um, from Ghanaian kente cloth. So it differs. There are different patterns to it, and yeah, I'm planning on making different products. I'm just starting with suspenders, bow ties, and ties okay. from now. And you can find me on Instagram at Couture's Closet, K U T O R S K L O S E T. Okay. Can you get into some bow ties, and I can get my husband like the suspenders oh, sure. and bow tie. <laughs> okay. It's and cute too. Thank you. And would say again where you can be found? Instagram, Instagram, K U T O R S K L O S E T. Okay, great, great. Couture's Closet. And finally, what advice would you give or what would you say to young people who are interested in entrepreneurship? My first advice would be do not limit yourself. Do not let age be a limit to you. Because we, the peer, we the young, we the youth, always think that, oh, you're so young. We can't start a business. There's nothing that we are passionate about. But one thing I know that we all have something. We all have something that we can do really good. So just try. Take, take risks. Nothing, nothing, can, nothing bad can come from that. So just don't limit yourself and dream big. Beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. So, um, not to be negative, but I think the reality, and we were talking about this a little earlier, Chip, is that over 50% of small businesses fail. At least they fail first time around. So um, how, um, how does this program kind of mitigate that risk uh, for the young people who, who want to become and who are becoming entrepreneurs? How does this help them maybe avoid some of the pitfalls? Even though pitfalls aren't, are not always avoidable, and, but... And, and, yeah. they're not, and certainly right about that. And, you know, it, it may be that because entrepreneurship by its very nature is very risky. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to have a lot of businesses fail. But our idea is to help minimize that in the future mm -hmm. um, by, first of all, having our young entrepreneurs um, interact with experienced entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So they can really tell them, you know, we ask a lot of the students, why do you want to be an entrepreneur? And some of them say, oh, well, I want to be the boss. I want to make a lot of money. I want to tell people what to mm -hmm. do. Uh, <laughs> and then w w they go and they meet with a, a Kai Campbell, a Berger Walla, for instance, mm -hmm. in, in an exchange. And, he's, and he tells them, <clears throat> you have to be willing to do everything in your business. Um, you have to, and, you know, in his case, he, he runs a restaurant on Halsey Street. You've got to be <clears throat> available to cook. You've got to be able to bust tables. You've got to be willing to clean the bathroom if you need to and, and everything in between. And that's what an entrepreneur has to do, at least to get started. Uh, later on, mm -hmm. you become successful and you can hire more people to do those things. Absolutely. So that, that's a, a big part of it, is imparting some of that wisdom from, from current entrepreneurs. And also, um, we know from uh, adult entrepreneurs, they're not always prepared for the journey they yeah. need to take. They may very well have a passion for what they have to do, uh, they may think they have an idea, but translating an idea into a real business opportunity is, is different from just having an idea. So um, we try to get the students to think through that and think through all angles of it uh, and mm -hmm. to make a real plan. Uh, and then, you know, finally, having the access to capital and having money to begin your business is always a biggest challenge you know, for entrepreneurs. So in, in this case, we're giving them an experience of essentially going to investors and, and practicing asking for, for money uh, so that you have people who are willing to, to back your business. So I think, again, by giving them better insight into mm -hmm. what it really means to be an entrepreneur and understanding the highs and the lows. And we've got mm -hmm. people who've come and, and spoken to the students who have had great success in business, mm -hmm. but they only got to success after they had three or four failures. Mm -hmm. So understanding mm -hmm. that is, is part of the process. So uh, again, in the long run, uh, entrepreneurs, because they're, they're bold and they're daring and mm -hmm. they've got great dreams and ideas, are always going to be subject to, to failure. Uh, but 
we're hoping that by giving them some, some insight in advance, uh, it will better prepare them. And it won't discourage those who really have that, that bug and that dream. Mm -hmm. Great, so being able to cook well doesn't necessarily mean that you can have a successful restaurant. There are other things that you have to have in place. Exactly. Okay, great. Did you want to add anything? Do you want to add something? Sure. Uh, talk about what, yeah, what, um, what would you have? I know you have something to say here. Well, as Chip said, we had, um, we were exposed to people, to um, other entrepreneurs who went through that journey, who started off not mm -hmm. knowing a lot and have failed, have fallen, and also gotten up. <coughs> so um, this um, program actually helped me know where to start from, like how to register my domain name, because I wouldn't have known that mm -hmm. if I hadn't gone through this program. I didn't know where to start a business, where to um, start a website at, where to, how to um, um, promote my business. So that kind of min minimizes the chances of having a failing business, I guess. And are you that bold, energetic, daring person? Is that part of your character anyway, or did it just kind of come out through this process? It w I wasn't like that before, but as the pro as things went on, I got more confident in speaking to people and networking because that's what business is about. It's networking, mm -hmm. have forming uh, relationships with people so you can promote your business. So I wasn't as daring as bold as I, mm -hmm. I am right now, but it's a process and you grow with it. Yeah. Thank you. I like that. And we grow with it. Now I'm going to ask you one trouble, one question that's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble. Okay. What school do you go to? I attend Bard High School Early College. Okay. I'm a junior. All right. Junior. Yeah, you got to give a shout out to your school. Bard High. Or they're going to say, you didn't even say what school you went to. <laughs> it's and a great you, school, by the way. Oh, yes, they were on. We did a program with Bard just recently, and they are. So right now we're going to do the answer to our fun fact question. So our question was, according to a 2017 Forbes magazine report, what is the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs? Should I say it or does anyone know? <laughs> you guys probably know, but I'll say it. So the answer to that is black women. Black women are, according to Forbes magazine, the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs. So you are a part of the fastest growing group mm -hmm. of entrepreneurs. Oh, and congratulations you. to you, you on that. <laughs> and so I just want to thank you all for coming on EduTalk. Uh, today we have had Chip Haddock, President, CEO, and founder of the Newark Young Entrepreneurs Academy. And um, hey, great opportunity, young people, to find out more about that and to, uh, hey, to try. If you have an idea, something that you're working on, this is a great place for you to try and land. And Emily Manns, president of EMI Strategy, and she's the uh, co-founder of Have You Met Newark Tours and program manager for Newark Young Entrepreneurs Academy. That's a big mouthful. <laughs> and Couture Cora Cody, and I am saying your name like, right. like time right. after time. Yeah. It is, it's ingrained in there now. Okay, owner of Couture's Closet mm -hmm. <clears throat> and 2018 Newark Young Entrepreneurs Academy participant and winner of a few things along the way. So thank you all uh, for coming and for sharing with us. And we just want to say thank you for watching EduTalk. We'll be back with more and more and more about education in the city of Newark. And thank you from Mayor Raz J. Baraka's Office of Comprehensive Community Education. Mm -hmm.